Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to read with you a report taken from HackerOne. So the report I'm talking about is the following one. So it was submitted to the curl program. And basically why do I want to talk about this? I want to talk about this because this report turns out to be a slop. And this is going to be a really huge problem as artificial intelligence develops and keeps developing more and more. Basically, there's going to be a lot more reports like this one, which look like valid reports, but actually they are really not valid at all. They cannot be replicated. And basically they do not mean anything because they were generated with artificial intelligence. As always, I hope you find this video interesting. If you want to support my work, there is a Patreon subscription that gives you access to a private Git server. Thank you very much and enjoy the video. So what's this report all about? Well, this report was submitted to the curl program, to the curl project. Now curl has um, paid out a bunch of bounties. So far, it has paid a total of uh, 16 uh, thousand dollars so we have uh, four severities from low to critical low is about 540 critical is about 9200 dollars so why is this report interesting well this report is interesting because it starts out penetration testing report http3 stream dependency cycle exploit and here there is the overview basically it explains that uh, this exploit leverages this feature of the HTTP3 protocol, which is stream dependency cycles. And basically the idea was that using this feature, it was possible, according to the report, to bring a memory corruption situation over the curl client. So in this case, curl acted as an HTTP3 capable client. And with this, you could like crash out the client and then use this crash, of course, to do binary exploitation. So to either do the of service or remote code execution. And the way that this report is structured is you have the environmental setup, which has to do with setting up a malicious HTTP3 client using this IO quick project. So input out quick. And here you modify the project with this custom patch that introduces this uh, send cyclic priority method. So this is a Python implementation of an HTTP3 server. And then this report introduces this patch. And this patch is used in the actual server. So this is the code for the malicious server itself, which uses the IO quick library, which was modified by the previous patch. And as you can see here, in this class exploit server, we can find this send stream data. We can find 65,000 A's that are sent from the malicious server to the client. So this is going to trigger the binary exploit, the memory corruption on the client. At least this is what it looks like. So basically that's the idea. And then you actually launch the server. So you launch the server with these first two commands. Here you create a TLS certificate and then you launch the actual server. And then you launch the client to connect to the local server. And this should bring out the crash. There's even a crash analysis guide to reproduce a crash. You just launch attack and then you can debug with GDB. Here they put a breakpoint into this function ngtcp 2 http 3 handle priority frame and this is the expected output that there is a segmentation fault over this function and if you check out the registers you get all the A's that were written into the register R15 and so this is like uh, just to uh, inspect the core dump and some suricata rules for detection and so this was the report now what's wrong with this report well, the member of the curl staff, when they analyze it, they immediately saw a bunch of things. As a starter, the patch file that was supplied does not apply to the project. So if you follow the steps at the start of the report that they tell you to pull the IO quick library and to apply the patch, actually they do not work. And I've tested it myself and it's true. The patch does not apply. Here I've pulled the IO quick project in the uh, Git repository. And here I have the cycle patch.dev file, which is the one suggested in the report that introduces this uh, 
send cyclic priority method, but if you try to apply it, if you do git apply the diff, you get no such file directory because it's just wrong. Like the way that the metadata is set up on this uh, patch file does not work, does not apply to the repository as detailed in the report. So this is already a big problem. And then he replied by generating some other text, issue summary, the original patch failed to apply because the code base was updated. We fixed the patch to work with the latest version, but then they actually do not attach the new patch. And indeed the response was like, can you provide this new patch file because I do not see it and they never provide it. And then they explain what is a cyclic dependency. And then they, um, like all of these things uh, is uh, pretty much generated by artificial intelligence. And uh, also another member of the curl staff mentioned that even if there were this kind of bug, it would actually not be in curl, but in the library involved in handling stream priority in HTTP3, which is this uh, ngtpc2 and they also say like look this report seems like an attack on our resources to handle security issues either make precise arguments without ai slop or just stop and finally the maintainer of the project directly daniel stenberg wrote that this particular function which was present in the report in the stack recursion where the you know memory corruption would actually happen does not actually exist in these libraries in the libraries involved in handling HTTP3. So basically this was completely generated by AI and he was like, I call this AI slop, let's show off how this report has worked and he disclosed the report. So why do I want to talk about this? Because actually this is gonna be a really huge problem for bug bounty programs, for any sort of like places where you have to analyze security reports. Because with AI, you can generate highly detailed almost looking like extremely good reports but the point is that they are made up they do not actually represent a real vulnerability in a real code base and they can just be used to waste resources so you can think of this as a new sort of denial of service attack in which the resource being consumed is the attention of the people triaging the bug bounty report or anyways handling the vulnerability in a way because even to understand that the report is like just not um, it's just made up it does take some resource and with AI you can generate as much as you want this kind of reports so this really becomes a huge problem for programs that you know deal with bug bounties that read a lot of reports and this is sadly something that is uh, inevitable with artificial intelligence. AI tools can be extremely powerful, however, they can also be extremely dangerous even in non-trivial ways like these ones. Like you just spam a program with reports like this uh, and you make them waste resource on trying to understand is this correct, is this just made up. And there's really, it's really hard to understand how to deal with this problem, to be honest. It's like a really hard problem that as these tools improve, it's going to be always harder to deal with because they will always look like closer to a real report, but they have no substance. They are totally based on statistical generation rather than actual vulnerability. So what do you think about these things? Let me know what you think in the comments down below and see you at the next video.